To stay up to date with my latest videos and cool reviews, please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to never miss new video updates. Huawei MatePad Paper Review The Huawei MatePad Paper is an excellent big screen e-reader and comes with the tactile M pencil stylus for helpful note-taking, but the high price hinders it from being a true Kindle competitor. Pros M pencil and folio cover included, text and voice note-taking is excellent, thin and comfortable to hold, large screen adds versatility, cons, no water resistance, sparse choice in the bookstore, high price. Is the Huawei MatePad paper an e-reader, a productivity tool, or a tablet? It's actually a little bit of all three and this makes it a fairly niche piece of kit, particularly because of its eye-wideningly high price. However, unlike Huawei phones, you can enjoy the MatePad paper even if you rely on Google services during your everyday life. Combine that with Huawei's talent for making great hardware. And anyone who is serious about e-books will want to take a closer look. Design at its heart, the Huawei MatePad paper is an e-reader, taking on the almost ubiquitous Amazon Kindle range. However, with its 10.3-inch high-resolution e-ink screen, it's larger and more versatile than the e-book-focused Kindle. It also comes with a stylus so you can use it as a notepad or sketchbook, and the software has a pre-installed email program, a voice recorder, and various other productivity features. The slim slate measures 6.65 mm thick and is 182 mm wide, and weighs 305 grams. This is heavier than a Kindle Paperwhite, but lighter than a 9th generation Apple iPad and because the weight has been equally spread through its chassis, the MatePad paper never feels heavy at all. Huawei has covered the MatePad paper in what looks a bit like leather but feels a lot like plastic. It does have a pleasant tactile finish though. The chassis itself is plastic with a pair of speakers, a volume control, a USB Type-C connection to charge the device, and a fingerprint sensor in the top right of the body. This is moderately reliable, but not all that fast. I've been using the MatePad paper mostly as an e-reader and for this it's excellent. I like the large screen as I can have smaller text and fit more on one page, and haven't found the weight off-putting. It's comfortable to hold for long periods, and the big screen means you can rest it on your chest when reading in bed. The left-hand side of the chassis has a larger bezel than the other side, giving you somewhere to hold the device. For reading e-books, the MatePad paper is a great companion, and there's something very cool about the large, monochrome e-ink screen. I also like that it doesn't look like just another iPad clone, and the sophisticated style makes it stand out against the simple Kindle. Screen the MatePad Paper's 10.3-inch e-ink screen has an 1872 by 1404 pixel resolution, resulting in a 227 pixel per inch (ppi) pixel density. For reference, this is lower than the 300 ppi on the smaller Kindle Paperwhite and the 264 ppi of a 9th generation Apple iPad, and I do notice. Text is still defined and readable. But it's not quite as razor sharp as you get on the paper white or an Apple iPad dot but it's not quite as razor sharp as you get on the paper white or an Apple iPad. You can change the size and weight of the font and the brightness, but there's no system-wide option to alter the look of the screen, such as changing the background color for alternative paper looks. It's monochrome all the way too, so don't expect to view color images, meaning it's not really suitable for reading comics or magazines. The MatePad paper's screen delivers a basic but competent viewing experience but isn't as sharp as the competition or suitable for much outside of text viewing. As this is an e-ink screen you have to deal with some delay when interacting with the touchscreen. The lag can frustrate if you try to do things too quickly, but if you're just tapping to turn the page or navigating through menus it's fine. The gesture control system works well provided you're patient, and it's accurate enough that you can easily use the sliders to adjust volume, font size, or screen brightness. Huawei touts a smart refresh feature on the MatePad paper, but I've found even with this switched on the screen does need manually refreshing often, due to ghost images appearing on the e-ink screen behind the text you're trying to read. It's not a problem, but if you're not aware a refresh cures it, then it can be a worry. What about video? Well, it works. There's a browser installed and you can access YouTube through it. Video plays at a low frame rate and only in monochrome, 
so you won't be watching movies on it, but you can tell what's going on and the audio not only sounds great, but it's in time and synced with the low frame rate video. However, watching video isn't fun, and although the screen is even bigger than an iPad, the MatePad paper is definitely not a multimedia powerhouse. Stylus and Software The MatePad paper uses Huawei's Harmony OS 2 software. There's an on-screen keyboard to type and the e-ink screen manages to keep up quite well, although I wouldn't want to type anything of any length using it. For that, you get the second generation M Pencil stylus included in the box. Similar in size and thickness to an Apple Pencil, it has 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and a 26 millisecond latency, plus it's charged when magnetically attached to the side of the MatePad paper. Huawei wins points for including the magnetically charging M Pencil in the box with the MatePad paper, something few other companies do, and that's just the start of the good news. It's an absolute joy to use. Huawei has tailored the screen and stylus's interaction with it to feel exactly like writing on paper, and it does an amazing job of replicating this tactile experience. There's a Notes app installed, and in it, there are a few options including paper styles, pen types, font colors, and text boldness. You can convert handwriting to text ready to copy and paste into an email, and in my limited testing, it did well at recognizing my scrawl unless I went out of my way to write messily. I liked how it also picked up misspellings. What else can you do on the MatePad paper? Using the M Pencil you can annotate pages in a book, and there's a split-screen mode to take notes when reading too, and this works in reading apps installed separately. There's a voice recorder app that does a surprisingly good job and I could see it being used for lectures or interviews, and the speakers for playback are loud and clear. The MatePad paper has a competent email app with quick setup for Gmail, Yahoo, and Microsoft accounts, plus a calendar and calculator pre-installed. Battery, storage, and connectivity. The MatePad paper comes with 64GB of storage so there's plenty of space for books, simple files, and emails. Unfortunately, there's no space for a microSD card. It connects to a Wi-Fi network and has a Bluetooth 5.2 connection for headphones so you can listen to audiobooks. Inside is a 3625mAh battery that Huawei says will last for 28 days on standby, which doesn't really mean much in the real world. So far, using the MatePad paper daily for at least an hour of reading, along with using the additional features of the tablet and charging the M Pencil, I've seen about 10 days of use. This is far less than you'd get from an Amazon Kindle, and the price you pay for the larger screen and additional functionality. Use the MatePad paper solely as an e-reader and you'd likely stretch this time out, but don't expect it to continue for weeks without a visit to the charger. Price and Availability The Huawei MatePad paper's final global release date hasn't been confirmed yet, but we do know a price for its European launch, 499 euros. That's about $550. For this, you get the MatePad paper, the M Pencil stylus, and a folio cover in the box. Our take. The MatePad paper is super thin, rather classy to look at, and comfortable to hold. It makes perfect sense as a Kindle Paperwhite alternative for those who may find the 7-inch screen too small, or want to get a little more functionality from their e-ink device. However, you could buy three Kindle Paperwhite e-readers and still have some money left over for a few books for the price of one MatePad paper. That means you've got to really plan to use the stylus, the note-taking, and the productivity features for it to make any sense. Just because it has a screen the size of an Apple iPad, don't consider it a direct alternative either, as the e-ink screen means if you want to watch the video you're better off with a regular tablet. An iPad 10.2 is cheaper than the MatePad paper 2. While I do think it's an excellent alternative to a Kindle, the rest of the features won't always appeal, and it can't compete with true multi-purpose hardware like a tablet. The MatePad paper occupies a niche within a niche, and while I am enjoying reading my e-books on it I'm very aware I would do the same on a competing device for a lot less money.